When I was in high school, I loved to wrestle. I wasn't anyone to talk about, and considering some of the talent that our high school produced, I wasn't worthy to carry the gym bag of some of the incredible Olympic talent we had on the team. One day during practice, the head coach, a legend in his day, seemed to pick on me mercilessly. He belittled me in front of the team and made fun of me and got a number of laughs, but we know in high school, even small comments can ring louder than they are. But I was bothered by it and I went to his office after practice and asked him, Coach, did I do something wrong to provoke such treatment? I don't understand. Well, he didn't handle it very well and he started to pound on my chest with his finger and told me that I was not a good wrestler and that I was just wasting my time out there on the mats. And I was really taken back by his response. I responded to him and said, listen, I'm the guy that runs around the gym beforehand according to your specified warm-up routine. I climb the ropes and lift the weights before every practice when those who are more capable wrestlers than me did no such thing. He then responded to me and, well, they don't need to do that warm-up exercise. They're athletes. They're better wrestlers. That blew my mind, but I had one more thing to say, and it was simply this. I said I would work out for 15 minutes before we come to the mats, and though I'm limber, I'm also a little bit wore out from the exercises that you prescribed, so maybe I shouldn't do it either, and we'll see what happens. I left his office a little bit discouraged by the coach's response, the last thing that I anticipated. That weekend was going to be an historical event where our first string wrestlers would wrestle the 100th match in a home game against another team. We had 98 undefeated team matches, which took a period of about six years to accomplish. On that fateful Saturday, there was going to be an away match, the 99, with a team that we had previously beat, so the coaching staff aligned all the second string wrestlers to go to the 99th in an away game so that the first string wrestlers could wrestle the 100th match, being an historic occasion with lots of press. Saturday morning, I came in early to get on the bus to go to the away game to support my team. Coach Green, a junior varsity coach, approached me and said, Vinny, would you like to wrestle? And I was thinking probably an exhibition match or something, but I love to wrestle. And I said, sure. He said, well, first string wrestler was not able to wrestle for some injury, so they had to move the second string wrestler up. So since I was the third string, I could wrestle the 99th match in the away game. I gladly accepted the offer and suited up with the team. We did weigh-ins at our own schools. I weighed 152 and would be wrestling in the 162 weight class. The wrestler on the other team had previously wrestled in the 172 weight class and probably lost a little bit of weight to wrestle in the 162. He was a good six inches taller than me. Something really interesting happened during the 99th match. We started to lose one match after the other. Now Brentwood hadn't lost a match in many years, so if we lost the 99th, there would be no 100th match, no media event, no school record. And it came down to my match. Whether I won or lost, the school would win or lose. When I went out onto the mat, I was clearly mismatched with this wrestler named Elmer. When the whistle blew, I was pretty aggressive in trying to take this wrestler down, but as I latched onto him, he would just peel me off like I was nothing and throw me to the side. For the most part of the next six minutes of heavy duty wrestling, I was at a loss and fighting to keep my back off the mat from being pinned. Whether I was pinned or lost by points, our team would lose based on the number of wrestlers that followed me, regardless of what they did. It was a point thing, and I had to win. Since it was an away game, the stands were livid. They were loud, and they were hungry for Brentwood's defeat. We had only a few faithful travelers that followed us to this 99th match, as most people were already at the high school preparing for the 100th match. I didn't give too much thought to the consequences of losing the match, but I did do the math and realized it was a precarious situation. I did not anticipate when I woke up Saturday morning. I was losing bad. The score was 13 to 2. I think I had escaped one time to get away from this giant of a wrestler. He was clearly stronger than I was and larger than I was. With 20 seconds left on the clock, I was on all fours, and he was on all fours above me and didn't even make contact 
with my body. That's how big he was, and that's no exaggeration. I looked over at my team for encouragement, and there were a few faithful friends encouraging me to keep going. My coach had his head buried in his hands. I guess he was thinking, how am I going to explain this to the head coach who had previously chewed me out? The stands were ablaze, and it was deafening. They were about ready to beat Brentwood, the undefeated. An interesting thing happened in those final moments. When they blew the whistle for the final 20 seconds, Elmer's head dropped into my view, and I instinctively grabbed his head and tucked it underneath my chest as I arched my back. Elmer went over like a sack of potatoes, and his shoulders hit the mat first, and he was pinned with only seven seconds left to go in the match. I had buried my head and chest into him and not willing to let go until I heard the referee's hand slam the mat. Elmer was pinned. The 99th match was ours. Of course, this was the epic match of my wrestling career, and I will never forget the lessons that I learned that moment, that day. Even though the coach was hard on me, I had followed his prescribed exercises before each wrestling practice and had gained a level of endurance that paid off great dividends in these final moments. I had worn out Elmer. He was stronger than me. He was bigger than me. But sometimes endurance is all we have when the chips are down, when things are not going our way, when our trials are red hot. Endurance saved the day that day. And we went on to the 100th match. I remember some of the first string wrestlers coming out to the bus to greet us. They had heard the news of what had happened, and their appreciation to me were some of the highlights of my young high school career that I shall never forget. When the referee's hand hit the mat, I collapsed in exhaustion and could barely stand up. Elmer was dragged off the mat, and I remember laying behind the chairs watching the final matches. This was actually one of the greatest lessons of my life. When the chips are down and there's only a few faithful friends that are cheering you along, endurance might be all that you have to see things through to the end. God is mindful of all of us and teaches us our lessons through events such as this.